Greetings, and thanks for tuning in. My ancestors, my people, hey! My name is Yolanda Wisher, AKA DJ Mahogany, and I am your poetry conductor on this emergent train of thought. Your radio host with the most. Settle in with something bubbly or sweet a fine brew or a comfy chair and enjoy the show with us on this Friday night at the end of a long and wild ass week in America. Say it ain't so. Well, while you were waiting for us to get started, you heard a little jazz music from one of our local favorites, singer and keys rippler, V. Shane Frederick several tunes from his brand new EP entitled Blacklight, now available on all music streaming platforms. I'm not here alone, folks. I'm here with my fabulous co-host, DJ Juju, AKA Naturalista, boss lady, communications goddess, Jalisa Mungin. How you living, girl? I'm doing good, oddly. I'm cool and collected. I'm feeling Johnish on a little Friday afternoon. Johnish. I'm feeling DJ Mahogany. <laughs> I, you know, I'm feeling Johnish too. Is that in the Merriam Webster? Because it need to be. It's about to be. I got a pen degree. I throw that John in there. That's right. <laughs> and you know, you know, we rounding out the trio with DJ Black Child. AKA songwriter, producer, engineer, extraordinaire, somebody daddy. Vince Anthony in the house. What's good? From West Philly. Yes. How's everybody doing tonight? It's, it's nice to be in the metaphysical place. Mm, I thought you was about to drop a Zodiac sign up in there. <laughs> what's your sign, brother? I'm a Pisces. I'm a Cancer. Mm, Jaleesa, what's your sign? I'm a Taurus cusp, so I got a little Gemini in there. Well, I hope there's, yeah, I hope there's some some Zodiac lovers out there in the universe, um, some folks out here listening. Folks, you are listening to the Big Wash Radio Show on your Innovation Vibration Station, L-J-A-M. What you are currently experiencing is a different kind of Zoom webinar meets radio show podcast, the first time collaboration between the Fabric Workshop and Museum and Philadelphia Contemporary, inspired by the work of a gifted black queer visual artist, yes. Jonathan Linden Chase. Chase's work is currently featured in an exhibition entitled Jonathan Linden Chase Big Wash, now on view at the workshop until June 6. Now for all you listeners out there, we, we wanna know where you calling in from. We wanna know where you chatting in from. We wanna give you an opportunity to tell us where you are listening from, your city, your neighborhood, your room in the house. Maybe you're in the loo. Tell us where you are 
listening in from? We got somebody from Chicago. Hey. Shout out to him. Hey, shout out to him. What's up? Tell. Okay, MIA. All right. Okay. West Philly, Ooh, Toronto. Hey, Toronto. G Town. Hey, out. Hey. Indiana. Hey, holla. This child, little Chester, Chester, Westchester, okay. Chocolate City. Yes. Hey, Point Maine. Ray's Long Beach. Okay, Long okay, Beach. Okay, Bridge. Yes. I yes. Oh, okay, South Universe. Coast, hey, LA. I see you, LA. South Philly represent. Represent. Well, yes, Lafayette Hill. Hello. Yes, Kitchen. Where yes, the kitchen. refrigerator is. I, I know that's right. That's, That's right. my favorite college spot right Where there. I wanna be. Well, well, I don't know about y'all. I'm, I'm not sure if everybody out there has, since you know some of y'all from way out there. I don't know if all y'all been to the Fabric Workshop and Museum, but I've been there several times. The workshop is a contemporary art museum downtown by the Reading Terminal, the famous Reading Terminal at 12th and Art Street in Philadelphia. It's actually one of my favorite museums in the city because it's free admission, five dollars suggested donation. You could go there and get your hands dirty, screen printing in the studio. I did that once with my tween and my, my hubby. That was a nice little weekend activity. And uh, you can also see some dope art exhibits there. And if you haven't visited this Philly treasure yet and you've been in our town, you'll get a little taste of it tonight during our show. And you'll be so eager to visit afterwards. But tonight, we're coming to you live from the Laundromat Radio Station of the Soul an extension of the Big Wash exhibition at the Fabric Workshop, lit by the light of Jonathan Lyndon Chase's conjuring of imagery. Rinsing the ears of the eager and spinning the wheel of good fortune, we're here to make the universe oh so fresh and so, so clean. But on a less metaphorical tip, we have a great show for y'all tonight. The artist behind the Big Wash exhibition, Philly's own Jonathan Lyndon Chase, is going to be in the, in the laundromat studio with us tonight. You're also going to hear some excerpts from the mini mix of Jonathan's poetry and DJ Black Child's musical interludes that we put together as part of our collaboration with the workshop. We've got live on the scene reports from the Fabric Workshop's correspondents, Karen Patterson, Katy Perry, and Nikki Schaefer. And we're gonna open up the poetry call line for a caller somewhere in the nation who needs to be heard. There might even be an opportunity, just saying, for you to shake your groove thing. But you know, we're gonna hold on to that to the end. But first, we're supposed to be telling people what's good out there in the world. Jalisa, DJ Juju, tell them what's up with the weather and the traffic out there. Well, you know, met them on a Friday afternoon, cumulus clouds of brisker. 34 degrees, the roads are looking very COVID clear on a quarantine evening. I would definitely say that's nice enough. Brisk. Back mm -hmm. to you, DJ Mahogany. Well, thanks, DJ Juju. That's very Jilly from Philly of you. <laughs> and uh, DJ Blackchild, what's good with local sports? Well, tomorrow afternoon, it's the event you've all been waiting for. The Bad News Bards battle against the Germantown Griots on the parkway at 1 p.m. It'll be a poetry battle of epic proportions. Get your ginger beer, but don't tailgate. <laughs> we'll be giving you verse by verse reports on the lyrical sparring of local poets. It's going down. Word, you know these Philly poets don't play. So it's gonna be a battle. You know, we got laureates in every neighborhood for real and they will cut you. <laughs> Come for ya. You know, we could use some real sporting events in this town. Hmm. But uh, speaking of dirty laundry, I'm thinking about what I got to do this weekend. I'm big about laundry on the weekends because I like to start my week with a fresh set of clothes, you know. I'm also really particular about how I fold stuff, you know, like, I, you know, because I used to work at The Gap. So, you know, I know how to fold a T-shirt. And uh, when it's summer, I like to hang my clothes on the line. So, you know, you could tell a lot about a person from their laundry habits. I'm wondering, Vince, what, what kind of laundry habits you got especially now you a new daddy and everything i'm sure your laundry habits have changed yeah well i learned how to fold like directly after drying oh oh yeah, i've really gotten into just making it a whole long process something that i take in as a daily like chore activity that is normally broken up by me throwing them on the bed or the couch somewhere but oh. now folding <laughs> straight through okay learn my lesson evolution all right all right. And what about you, DJ Juju? 
oof, my evolution is not as televised as DJ Black Child's because my laundry sits for weeks. It will leave that dryer. <laughs> it will sit in a bag. It will get wrinkled. And this is why my steamer is the best appliance in my house. I got a nice little one from Walmart. I hit Wally oh. World with a little, little steam action because, of course, they get wrinkled because I'm lazy. I haven't quite figured out the adulting thing yet. So mm. I want to level up mm. in this you know, year of our Lord 2021 and mm. get like DJ Black Child and fold my laundry after the dryer. I feel a little, I feel a little inspired, good brother. I think mm. I think I need to get my laundry. I don't always right. hit the mark. I don't always hit the mark, <laughs> but I'm trying. Wow. Better than I, me. I wonder if the folks out there have any um, strange laundry habits they might want to throw up in the chat and share with the world, you know, because that's what we're here to do in this webinar. Uh, share your personal habits with the world. Uh, but, you know, there's a poem in there somewhere, you know, about the laundry and the people, you know, and how it represents who we are. You know, uh, we got April saying, she says, fold up before the wrinkles. You know, you got to get your Marie Kondo on. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, I, you know, throw some laundry tricks in the chat. You know, um, I could use them. Hillary says she lets her dog snuggle in the pile of fresh, warm clothes for 10 minutes before I fold. And it's a snuggle mountain. That's what's up. There's definitely some poetry in this. Um, you know, tonight. We're going to be doing something special, y'all, because y'all are special people out there. I could tell from all these comments. <laughs> We're giving away a special prize. If you can guess the answer to our trivia question later in the show, DJ Blackchild, tell them what we're going to give away tonight. We're giving away a year long membership to the Fabric Workshop and Museum, plus a copy of Jonathan Linden Chase's latest book, Wild 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 West, Haunting of the Seahorse. What? You're also getting a limited edition L Jam sticker, button, and pencil. And in the spirit of the laundry, you're getting a bottle of bubbles. Ha, ah, bubbles? Oh, I love bubbles. You know, I, I secretly still love blowing bubbles um, with my kid. And oh, yeah, that's fun. That's never going to Yeah, that's like a stage of parenthood <laughs> that you really have to enjoy. Um, and I don't know, I feel like blowing bubbles on the stoop or it's just a Philly kind of thing. I'm sure everybody else has got that thing, you know, uh, but it feels Philly to me too. That's a really dope bundle of swag that somebody's going to win. So you got to stay tuned for how you can win the prize. We're going to drop the trivia question at some point in the chat. So you got to be paying attention. Uh, you got to be engaged, you know, here on this Friday, don't drink too, too much that you missed the trivia question. Um, but you know, we're about to kick things off, y'all. Are y'all ready for this? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's about to get real. We're about to really tap into the zoom universe. Okay. Is. So now to kick off tonight's show, we're going to head over to the Fabric Workshop and Museum live. Can y'all believe we could do this right now? Where curator, we got it. You know how you give the drummer some? We're going to give the curator some. Mm -hmm. Karen Patterson is live on the scene of the Big Wash exhibition. This is an exclusive look into the never before seen show. Hey, Karen. Exclusive. Hey, everyone. I am live, as you said, in Jonathan Lyndon Chase's exhibition and laundromat, Big Wash. And I want to give you a sense of what this space means to Jonathan and to us and to Philadelphia. Jonathan's space that he create that they created for us is a space where the laundromat becomes a space of intrigue, where strangers gather and the lines between public and private are blurred in the most interesting and kind of desirable way. For example, we have this person who's shown up at the laundromat and this person's name is Heartbreaker in the parking lot with, his, with their juicy couture and their Foreman Mills advertisements. But all along the walls, just outside the laundromat, we have people who are either going to or coming from the laundromat. And they're bringing all that energy with them and all that energy next to you while you fold and dry first. So for example, this piece is called Empty Pockets. This is called Foreman Mills Browsing. And we see these bodies being kind of blurred and invisible with the dollar signs beside them as they find the best outfits at Foreman Mills. We move into the home and this beautiful large painting full of desire, red hot heat. It's called You the One. 
And then we have this beautiful painting with some of the yardage that Jonathan Lyndon Chase made with us at the fabric workshop that's called Sad Forecast. And I don't know about you, but I also remember the laundromat as a place of kind of good melancholy, of that sadness when it's raining, but it feels like the right thing to do. This person here in this painting that's called Waiting for You to Get Here, maybe they went to the laundry, they washed the tablecloth, they got ready because they're ready for someone to come over. And then we go over to the laundromat, more people, more boxers hanging along on the clothing line in the space. So what's so interesting about a laundromat is that you can be public, you can be private, you can watch other people's stuff. They're watching your stuff. And we're all here in this kind of buzz of a laundromat, this hum with the TV kind of mulling in the background. This laundromat scene is called weekdays. Maybe you do your laundry on the week. Maybe you go on the weekends. Heartbreaker's still here. And then we go over to this painting that's called where are you at? This person may be waiting outside the laundromat, waiting for you, getting ready. This person is glowing in this painting and it's just called suds. So they're, br they're brightened by the light of a street light maybe, but as you get into their glow of their beautiful skin, there's another pattern that emerges. And then we move back into the red hot heat because those of us who go to the gym, this is called locker room. And we know that those clothes never really get clean. This is a hot steamy locker room. And then we go, we pinpoint back to some of the yardage that Jonathan made with us and translated into a whole new body of work. This beautiful orange and purple that they translated into canvas, little punctuation marks all through the paintings, behind this fan. Slowly, I will bring you in back into the laundromat here to see all these boxers. So when we think about the laundromat, and we go there next time and maybe we think of it as a chore or something that you always forget to do, that you have to do, that you don't have enough change for, that you don't know what to bring. Think about Jonathan Linden Chase. Think about their laundry. Think about the laundromat as a place of intrigue, of desire, with a whole bunch of extra energy that we never saw coming. And when you look for it, Think of this pattern that you see. It may not be visible, but it's there. There's an energy of togetherness, of desire, of empathy, and of each other. So the, the laundromat is so much more than just a duty. Wow, thank you so much, Karen. That was an awesome glimpse into the fabric workshop and the big wash exhibition that's now up. I mean, that was just amazing. I felt like I got like really intimate look into the exhibition um, from someone who's really close to the artist and their practice. Um, I would also just like, I'd love to actually be there and even see it up close too, now even more so, right? Um, so thank you so much. We can't wait to see it. Now let's get a different angle on the exhibition from museum tour manager Katie Perry in this video highlighting the fabric workshop studios and the story behind the yardage or fabric that Jonathan designed as part of the residency that led to the exhibition and those boxers that we all want. This is the 
the story of Jonathan London Chase's yardage. Bending Sag, printed at the Fabric Workshop and Museum, the fall of 2019. Jonathan London Chase was asked about the story of this print. Their answers became an imagined dialogue between a rose and a butterfly. This story begins from the grid of Philadelphia, while Mariah Carey plays on the radio, and a rose telephones a butterfly. Chirp, 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 where you at? Here with the butterflies, flying free. I've wondered if a boy could be a butterfly. Yes. Butterflies can hold all genders. Some on each wing. We are always changing. We cycle like laundry. Chirp, chirp. Chirp, where you at? Here in this rosebud, we are tender here. Soft, but we have thorns. We are part mask, part reflection, part our own built world. We, we are sharing signs, signs of love. Of love. These are about love, desire, dreams, purification, cycles, the experiences of living in a queer black body and space. You just heard an excerpt from the Big Wash Mini Mix, now streaming wherever podcasts grow. You can also hear it directly at ljam.org. You can hear the whole mix via the link in the chat. Shout out to DJ Blackchild, whose vocals you hear, as well as those of Jonathan Lind and Chase on that mix. That was dope. You still loving that? I mean, I know you fall in love with every mix that you make, and that's kind of like your baby, but how are you feeling about this one now? I run that back in the car a lot. Word? Yeah, yeah, I run that back in the car a lot. Mm. It's, it really feels, I like the space of that particular one. And working with the metronome was really fun. Like, it, it was really pushing me to do some creative things with something that is normally, like, I would never think to use that, but mm -hmm. yeah. I really mm -hmm. like that mix. Yeah, it's, it's a special one for me, too. And Jaleesa, what did you think about that story of the yard? I thought it was, I, I was thinking of my boy who was a butterfly when I was listening to that. I just went into auntie mode. I had such a little <laughs> like heart, <laughs> such a little heart moment, I think, especially after this week. But more importantly, I love the animated pieces. I think that part, the animation of the butterfly and the rose in particular for me was just, it was beautiful in that video. Plus, you know, I gotta know, chirp, chirp, where you at, DJ Black Child? Well, we have a special guest in the laundromat tonight. Mm, mm, mm. The artist behind the video and the Jonathan Linden Chase Big Wash exhibition now on view at the Fabric Workshop and Museum. That's right. So a little bit about Jonathan Linden Chase. Jonathan has lived and worked in Philadelphia their whole life, receiving their MFA from CAFA in 2016. Chase was recently announced as the 2019 Fellow by the Pew Center of Arts and Heritage. Represented by a company gallery in New York, Chase's work has been widely exhibited and lives in numerous public and private collections around the world. Around the world, y'all. They have been featured in GQ, the New York Times, and the Los Angeles Times. So welcome to The Wash, Jonathan. 
Ooh. Hey, everybody. Hey, <laughs> hey. There you are. what's up? Hey, beautiful people. Hey, so you a beautiful person. Yeah. Hey. Oh, I got all the questions, but I think Jalisa got the first question okay. for you. Okay. All right. Because I need, I think I want to throw this to everyone. How mm. are you handling this pandemic, this quarantine life? Like, what's fueling you these days in this 2021? Yeah, you know, it's been, you know, like everybody can agree, it's been like a really wild, crazy ride, right? And um, there's been a lot of, you know, like tough points. And um, I think, you know, like trying to figure out ways to be comfortable with not seeing friends and family as much and spending a lot more time with yourself, you know, like kind of really um, being isolated in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. For me, um, I'm really, really happy and fortunate to be surrounded by so many beautiful creative people, uh, my immediate family, my husband. And one thing I've been doing um, that I love to do all the time is uh, read. And <laughs> I've been um, really reading like lots of um, poetry, um, theory, like uh, queer gender theory, sexual politics and things of that nature. Uh, I've just finished recently a really great book called Evidence of Being, um, the Gay Black Cultural Renaissance. And mm -hmm. Um, kind of like in a way trying to temporarily um, kind of get out of like the sort of tense isolating space. I've been spending lots of time thinking of like poetry ancestors and mm. hating like contemporaries and ancestors. So mm. for me, I guess, you know, um, art is like my therapy. Um, mm -hmm. Thinking about all of those people like Joseph Beam, Essex, Marlon Riggs. Um, mm -hmm. It's been really great to kind of like spend like slower time with their work and let it like really... Um, charge me in a way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about I'm thinking about this question is kind of about lineages and you know the ancestors that kind of inspire us or the people who kind of inspire or set us on our path there's, there's a new article you're featured in in cultured magazine where the artist talks about or the author talks about your mother and how you got your uh, meditative capacity for cleaning from your mom and I also have a mom who cleans and believes in like the gospel of cleaning. And I'm just wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about your mom and her cleaning philosophy and how it's impressed upon you. Yeah, like that's like so great. Like that connection between like moms, you know, so you definitely know what it's like kind of uh, in your youth, like waking up and there's like a whole cleaning day, the music is on and stuff like that. Um, so that really is something that stays with me um, even until now. Um, she um, is an artist too. So I get my creativity, mm -hmm. I think from her and she kind of understands what um, sort of those ups and downs of like chaotic kind of energy and like your brain is kind of going everywhere. So she really taught me a lot about how your domestic space, like your, your home, your dwelling, um, as a reflection of your inner self, mm. your mind and your emotions. And she always kind of was um, really championing this idea of being really in tune with yourself, with yourself. Um, especially with me, like, I know that I'm a very impatient person. <laughs> so um, it teaches me how to really just kind of um, slow down and pay attention to like this other kind of body that maybe we don't really spend a lot of time slowing down and thinking about our black interior domestic safe space. Mm. Um, we like right now I clean like on Thursdays. Um, and I to kind of like end the week that way because like you kind of have all this like stuff on you that glues and sticks to like your body, your mind, your spirit, your emotions. So it's a great way. It's like a spiritual and kind of meditative practice to do something that you can kind of focus on and like a repetition of pattern and take care of like the, um, the, the thing that's like honing your body. Wow. I really love that take. I so love it. My mother also told me like, how your room look is how your life look, get it together. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I totally get that. Yes. Um, can you tell us more about these boxers though? Like I love the design and like this part of the exhibition like is really popped out to me as we were watching the tour. Please tell us more about these boxers. Yeah. Um, so like thinking about like the first question and one of the things that's been tough to navigate is um, not being around like friends and family and places that I normally go to like bookstores, galleries, museums. Um, so 
I was thinking of this way that we could just kind of connect in ways that we didn't um, think of like before and ways that you can have like an object that has like power and is charged in this way. So the title of the, the print and also like the boxers themselves remind me and I'm thinking about kind of the cultural significance of just sagging, right? Mm. And like the political loadedness of it. And and also ways away from that, just adorning yourself in, in beauty and being able to um, mm. not be policed by the space or other people that you're in. So I think that it's like a really uh, iconic and charged sort of like visual like in our world so there's like butterflies or people they float between um like fluidly through gender and i believe that we're all like multitudes of like people always like in flux and like always some like this liminal kind of space so mm -hmm. those are also some of the things i was thinking about um with the boxers and having like um an influence of the 2000s kind of fashion <laughs> mm -hmm. and um like i remember during that time like it seems like so long ago, but not really, right? Like um, plaid was like really kind of like a thing, yes. like on button downs and like apple mm -hmm. bottom jeans and like those like hats. So um, the, the uh, growing up with that also kind of influenced like the color palette for the boxers. Right. Like, um, then getting out into their world, um, the fun part of how they function is they're sent to um, some people I've selected, some people um, that are really close to me we're also queer black people um, living in Philly and some just like locally in the tri-state. So what happens is that they're uh, given these boxers, they're mailed, and then there's like a following list of instructions on things mm -hmm. to consider while spending time with them and uh, ways to like wash them. So it's kind of like a like a diary documentation of just other queer black people's lives and the boxers are then like, uh, given to other people that are shared. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of think of it as a chain letter, but without the spooky curses and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I love it. Okay. So, um, yes. yeah, that's, um, like the things I'm thinking about with the boxers, like an attempt to connect us in this um, other way, especially now in the times that we're living in. Sure. Yeah. So I have a question for you, Jonathan, but I'll also pose it to our listeners out there. So feel free to chat in, y'all. What is the wildest or the most beautiful thing that has happened to you in a laundromat? Because it's such a space of collection. It's such a space of community. I just, I just want to get further into that world. Yeah. Um. So I'm not gonna get like too spicy, right? So I'm gonna go for like. <laughs> oh, why not? Why not though? Why hey, not? hey, it's after work hours. You can get as spicy as you want to be. This is the happy hour. It's yeah. Friday. Um. Friday at the end of democracy. So hey, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I I I remember um because I I used to live in Alani. Um, that that's where I guess spent a lot of years of my life in the Alani section of Philadelphia, and uh there was a local laundromat. Um, it was like laundry on Fifth Street, um, on Rockland, and uh we would always go there. Most of it take like our comforters and like our heavier kind of stuff because at home our washing machine was pretty small. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, when um, I'm there one time and everyone's just kind of doing their thing, it was like winter. So people were kind of like huddled, like in their, like their coats and everything. And the uh, laundry mat was, uh, it was sort of warm, sort of cool. So everyone's like doing their mundane thing, their ritual. And um, there was this parent there and she had her, her daughter so I'm sitting there waiting for my thing to finish and everything. And I just noticed like she's drawing. So, you know, I kind of look at her and, you know, I'm like smiling and I'm like, you know, that's a pretty picture. Um, you know, I think like people should just like compliment each other more, just like send out that positive energy. For sure. So she's drawing these really interesting and kind of complicated drawings where they're um, sort of like these puzzles where she makes like these gestures and it looks like one thing, but just with a few lines, they turn into something else. Mm -hmm. So it was really just like cool, just like seeing her like in this space in her own little world, just waiting for her mom to finish like laundry. Mm -hmm. So she's like, hey, look at this one and look at that one. And then she invites me to like draw some. So I'm figuring out these drawing puzzles with her and like, she's like the sweetest little girl. <laughs> um, so she notices my nails are painted and 
like I'm like at first I'm like oh no like she gonna say something because like kids will be reading you right <laughs> true they do <laughs> so uh, as we're drawing and everything um it also kind of turned to like this really um kind moment where um she she painted my nail she was like like she did actually read me she was like your nails are so messy and chipped like how they <laughs> all these are right and i'm like you right so she like pulls out like all these balls of nail polish and like she paints like some glitter gold on there and it's just the cutest thing ever um yes. yeah like it was really really great just to kind of unexpectedly wake up in like this just really great interaction with the youth like she was really kind mm-hmm I've had so many moments, little and big moments in the laundromat, you know, I can remember. It's just, yeah, you could write a whole series of laundromat poems. I'm, I'm just always thinking of poems like that. And I'm thinking, too, people are putting in the chat, like, memories of the laundromat and also just daring slash poetic kinds of things that happen. It's just one of those places, like Karen said, of that good melancholy that produces the kind of human epiphany we need all the time. Mm. Um this question is really about Philly because, you know, you grew up here and you've, you're now an adult grown artist person in Philly. And I'm wondering what's that experience been like for you navigating the city, you know, and evolving with Philly? So, um, like in my youth, like as a kid, um, obviously I, I kind of really stuck out, um, sort of like not being able to pass this like a straight and um it was like really hard just kind of navigating like elementary middle school high school to a certain point um so i was a little bit um lonely and hadn't grown into myself yet but um i remember just always loving going to the art museum and like going to patha you arts just kind of like picturing myself like being like in sort of like those places mm. and i um would always kind of like look at off the graffiti and things in like the different neighborhoods. Like I've lived in like North, South, East, West. And um, with the show being also in the 2000s, um, I think a lot about like social media spaces as like another kind of temporal avatar space. And yeah. I'm really thankful for it as I was like 16, just coming out and being able to use like that space to um, bond with people over music and making lots of really great like gay and queer friends. And mm -hmm. it was like really amazing um, having someone who was um, in your city or just like states over and having like these sort of like really strong like feelings that were at a time like really hard to like navigate. And in some ways like, you know, like it still are in some ways, you know, that's why friends and family are so missed and important. Mm -hmm. um, but like to kind of grow into the person I am now, like at least just like so like vibrant and like jazzy and loud and in some ways kind of lawless and I feel like those things definitely like I paint about like Philly and Philly people and like energy and vibe and aesthetic so it definitely comes through um in my work mm. absolutely yeah so I want to switch gears a little bit here and ask you well first of all for listeners that don't know um our last uh, L Jam was a seven minute long, big wash mini mix of poetry and music audio. And you're hearing excerpts from that in between. Um, and I want you to talk a little bit about your experience recording the poetry. There was a really cool thing that happened where we got the audio files and the metronome click was still in there. And like, as an audio person, that is like, that never happens. I was just like, okay, let's ask some <laughs> questions about what we want to do with this and indeed uh jonathan has some inspiration Can you just talk about like recording the poetry and the, sending the audio and all of that yeah sure um my husband um is really like an influence on me in terms of like like sound art sculpture music so i learned like so much from him and i also like just from thinking about like haptics like sound and music rhythm um i decided like i wanted to kind of like experiment uh, a little bit and kind of just go with like my natural sort of flow so it was like a half balance of like intuitiveness and then a few like recording like parts just kind of going over again to kind of decipher like does this feel um does this feel like right you know like is the sound right and um 
making sure that I was able to really be calm and like centered, which as I was just like reading, I just kind of melted into it. And mm -hmm. it was really um, relaxing um, to be able just to kind of go in and just kind of do like your thing. Definitely got into a meditative mode because mm -hmm. it just was there kind of guiding the vibe. And I was trying to connect time passing with what you were saying. And yeah, that was just really interesting. You really stretched me with that. Like that, yeah. I really like, I'm like, uh, like Joseph Beam and Axis and the ones that uh, the other people I mentioned before and thinking about like late 70s, 80s, 90s during like the AIDS crisis and things like that and how mm -hmm. um, like the government and like um, other shared um, intimate spaces like the church would um, try to purify or wash or clean away like our stories and our and our like the things that we were going through like our pain and our joy so i spent a lot of time thinking about what those poets those uh poets did and thinking about the, the power of um uh the mouth right like the mm. vocal and the speech and um poetry is just so necessary mm. yes indeed mm -hmm. sure well, before I ask my last question, I wanted to give the folks tuning in an opportunity to ask a question in the chat of Jonathan. So my final question for you and folks get those questions going. What's next for you? What's on the horizon? What, what can we look forward to? What projects do you have coming up? How's 2021 looking like? Spill the tea. We are ready. <laughs> um, I am working on um, a project um, for uh, our Basel Switzerland, which I'm really stoked about. Um, we'll see what it looks like. It's like really kind of strange planning things just like last year and now, but um, I'm working on uh, like mall aesthetics uh, as a space where core back bodies kind of navigate and thinking about the death of the mall and like time temporally, how things are just like really kind of like changing and how they affect us. Like, um, like Aethan Market, um, it's like totally different. Um, like it's got the fashion district or something now. So just like one example of thinking about the mall, it's like a site for those kind of things. Hmm. I'm really, really excited about that. And I'm working on another speculative uh, fiction horror story because I think horror is like so necessary. I'm not gonna lie, as a true Philly John through and through, it's always gonna be the gallery. I don't know what the fashion district is. I don't yeah. know if they, they did this rebranding thing. I, I don't think that marketing was successful. It's the gallery. I don't care what anybody says, and that's on God. <laughs> what is this? That's right. Especially because I have a very distinct memory of getting off of the R5 train and walking with my Hollaberry, <laughs> like, you know, laid flat hair press and my tennis skirt Ooh. through the gallery. Come looking through. cute. Mm -hmm. So it's the, it's the gallery. So, it's the gallery forever. Yes. you know, oh. always period. the gallery. That's right. <laughs> So, you know, I, I, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. So I think I'm just going to say what I've been wanting to say is just that hi, I'm so excited and like grateful how we became acquainted with your work through this collaboration. And I feel like, you know, in my my work, I'm just, you know, I don't like to think of myself as a collector of people, but maybe just a collector of vibes and energies. And your work has this really powerful vibe and energy that belies your, your years and just the years that you have walked on the planet. So I feel like I'm in the presence of, of somebody great already, but somebody mm -hmm. who I want to be you know, acquainted with your work for a very long time. So I wanna thank you, Jonathan, for being you and also for joining us in the studio tonight. We appreciate your work in the exhibition and uh, you know, bless you. Thank you so, so much. Y'all are like so incredible. And thanks again for everybody for tuning in. And it's really great to have like made so many great friends in like this like weird time. Um, I love you all. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Thank indeed. you so much. Love you too. For sure. And then we did get a kind of some questions late after I cut it off. So maybe J Jonathan can answer those in the chat as we move to our next segment. And, uh, and coming up, after a short break, we're going to open up the call lines for a poet who needs to be heard. You're listening to Big Wash Radio on channel LJAM. We will be right back.
have got a very special poet calling in from D.C. tonight, y'all. What? D.C.? going down to 95. I, I don't know, because D.C. is on fire. So. Yeah, gonna, maybe we not going down at 95. I might have to stop in Baltimore. And just yeah, I don't know. <laughs> trip. I don't know if I'm going to really make it out of D.C. Either way, Jamal Rashad is yes. a D.C. Yes. born and based black queer writer, massage therapist, editor, what? and poet. Work the shoulders. He's also a founding member of the Corner Collective in a love of succulents, split mm. verbs, scarves, and coffee. Jamal I like all that too. Themselves, right, right, especially that coffee part. Mm -hmm. Jamal calls themselves an optimist when careful and a combination of ginger, sugar water, and happy tea. You mm -hmm. there, Jamal? I'm Jamal Rashad. I'm reading from Washington, D.C., a poem named Scene 23. In the hallway, naked, he bends down to milk the bull. I stumble into his throat. Against the wall, we become one, inseparable, glued in his grip. In the shower steam, I fall into him. In his eyes, I see myself jump. Tiring now in this ritual dance, I'm struck as he cups and squeezes one last time. In the bed, he finds my thigh, a meaty pillow. Two fingers pinch my flesh, wrap around my skin. One creeps to meet my wet mouth. He's at home, a man, settling down, sighing. Sweet baby, you taste so good. That poem was uh, tough. I, I don't even know if I'm old enough for that poem. Nope. <laughs> nope. Gotta be 35, 55 and older. I don't know. Not That's grown. That, that was grown. grown. That was grown. You know, I, but you know, I love it when a poet can say the most without saying it all. Right? Yeah. Very there was some there was some restraint and delicacy yeah. to yeah. the poem that I also appreciated. You know? Yeah, they were working those uh, verbs and adjectives. Yeah. Hey, yeah. You know, I would say it was a little lacy. It felt a little lacy. <laughs> <laughs> there, just a little little yeah. people, a little, little hoo -hoo, you know, mm -hmm. just got a little, as someone said, it got a little warm. Got a little, mm -hmm. got a little it did. Yes, Gail. Yes, Gail. It got a little warm <laughs> yes, in indeed. here. I think so. Did it? Let me get, wait, hold on. It did get a little. <laughs> oh, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Thanks for calling in from D.C., Jamal, because it's hot in D.C., so we know why mm -hmm. it's hot. Uh, we feature another one of Jamal's poems on the latest LJM mini mix at ljam.org, another talented poet, definitely one to watch. Mm -hmm. So DJ Juju in Black Cha, you y'all may not be aware, but during the quarantine, there's been a national coin shortage, which has been affecting our stomping grounds of the laundromat. We decided to delve into this crisis and find out how it's affecting folks here in Philly, just trying to get their clothes clean. So now, coming to us live from the field, we have Fabric Workshop Gallery Guide, Nikki Schaefer, reporting on the national coin and quarter shortage and its impact on laundromats across the country. And following Nikki's report, we'll have a quick word about Love John's, a mixtape. Be right back. Hi, I'm Nikki Schaefer, a gallery guide at the Fabric Workshop and Museum. Our newest exhibition at the museum is by Jonathan Linden Chase, a Philadelphia-based artist whose installation entitled Big Wash explores the laundromat, a place which blurs the boundaries between public and private life. Today, we'll be looking into how laundromats and their patrons have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. We all think of doing our laundry as an essential task, 
something that wouldn't stop even in the midst of a pandemic. But for many coin-operated laundromats, there doesn't seem to be enough coin to go around. Across the U.S., laundromats have had to become creative as both foot traffic and coin circulation have slowed. For months, many business owners have been relying on help from family members and friends, as well as banks to come up with the lost change. Jim Geherty, the chief executive officer of Coinstar, a coin cashing machine company, has said that he wouldn't describe it as a coin shortage. The real problem is that the coin isn't moving. It's there, it's just not in the right place, he says. There's a laundromat in my West Philly neighborhood called You Do We Do Locust Laundromat. About a month ago, I came here to wash a large comforter I have. Luckily, I have a change jar at home, so I didn't think twice about coming up with quarters for the machine. Last week, I ran into Benjamin, who lives close by, and has become dependent on using the coin machine here. My biggest coin issue with the laundromat mm -hmm. was figuring out where to find coins. Mm -hmm. The first time I got coins, I went to the bank. The quarters, I don't think, are the biggest issue. And this laundromat we go to has a working coin machine, coin change machine. And every time I've used it, they've been fine. And yeah, no, that's really, that's really it. It hasn't been a huge annoyance. It's just I have nothing to use them for, and I can't use the cash I get out anywhere else because no one has coins to give me change elsewhere. Right. So the bank and this laundromat machine, I think, are the only places that I could reliably get it. So, whether you're frequenting a laundromat or not, there are some ways you can help to alleviate this coin shortage. When you go shopping, bring coins with you so you can pay an exact change. You can also support retailers by rounding up and donating your coins if this is an option. And of course, taking your loose change to kiosks or banks will help recirculate coins back into the economy. Thank you for tuning in for this segment on coin shortages and laundromats. We'll be discussing how you store your coins at home coming up next. Frederick Douglass called poets picture makers, said their ability to make pictures was the secret of their power. And Audre Lorde wrote that poetry was a way of distilling experience, that it forms the quality of light within which we predicate our hopes and dreams towards survival and change, first made into language, then into idea, then into more tangible action. To witness the poet's sunlight of truth is an act of courage and love on the part of the reader and you, the listener. Unfortunately, the world is just going to drag on and on. And on. And on. And on.
This is not about whipping up a poem for the movement, like a grilled cheese sandwich, or sending a first draft of my rage to your latest issue. This is about a profound respect for the utterance and how it comes into being. This is about planting myself in the ocean of our existence like some ancient gathering coral reef, being honest every time I step to the page and the stage about what I've seen, what I'm seeing, what I can see. We need poems like lighthouses and hilltop fires showing the way. The poems we need to write for ourselves are the poems that others need to hear. You just saw our gorgeous and groovy first L Jam trailer. It's still so good. It still makes me feel warm inside. Yeah. Since 2019. Fun. Big ups to Ren Renee who created yes. that for us. Shout out to Ren. And shout out to Tosh Billington and the beautiful Afak. Both mm -hmm. beautiful folks. Yes, we had some lovely looking folk for our videos. And there's a sequel on our website featuring some other tasty looking folks <laughs> and uh, you can see them at ljam.org. Ljam is an anti-podcast for the daydreamer and commuter in you. We produce cool events like this one and we make music to accompany your inner and outer surgeons. To learn more about Ljam, which is a program of Philadelphia Contemporary, hit the link in the chat. And thanks to correspondent Nikki Schaefer for that awesome report about the coin shortage which sounds like it's really more of a coin funk. So, you know, I appreciate hearing the call to use loose change when you buy things, because I almost got into it with a girl at Rite Aid named Debbie. I still remember her name. Ooh. Debbie told me I couldn't use change at the Rite Aid, and uh, I had to call corporate, so, you know. But Debbie's on Front Street now, so she better. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, me. I wish Debbie well, let's just say that. But on another note, growing up, we had an old water cooler jug that was full of coins for laundry and other things. Did y'all have a coin jar at home? And uh, I'm wondering about folks out there who are still hanging with us. Y'all listening? What, what did y'all keep your coins in? We had the big water jug that I don't know where, we never had water in the jug that right. the thing sat on, but we had right. the water jug. So where, where did you keep your coins, DJ Juju? You know, I think mine was, it, it depends on the time because it was either an old Folgers can or it was like an old like Cafe Bostello can mm -hmm. that had a little slit in the top. Yes. Um, I, I don't know who we thought we were drinking Cafe Bostello. It took forever <laughs> to get through that espresso. But because that one was yellow, I remember being young mm -hmm. and wanting that particular one because it was bright. And I was like, you know what? This is going to encourage me to save my little coin. Yes. So I thought if I had to go stay low, you can stick a little dollars in there, put little coins. You know, that was that was my thing. That's right. Right. What about you, Black Child? We had the big water cooler, John, and I had a mason jar at some point from my room. But I distinctly remember when a question came up, putting loose change and like pocket dollar bills into a shoebox. Oh, like I had a little stash, a special shoebox. Yeah. OK. But yeah, we not got it. to the mattress though. So with the shoe box like go in the under the bed and the closet, like you know, because that shoe box is critical. Yeah, it's like that's tucked. What, that's right. It's like tucked in a certain spot in the closet. You know, like yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought it was like real secret and I, think it's I was just overthinking it probably. But like yeah, yeah right for <laughs> real. Yo, there's a, quite a bit of interesting containers in the chat um, <laughs> that I'm really appreciating, including the couch is a mm -hmm. container for your change. <laughs> um, Thanks. I know about that. That's kind of like the default container. Um, so, you know, it's now time for my favorite part of the program where we, uh, you know, we do this. You know, it's our first time doing this, but in our ideal world, we do this every Friday uh, in your universe, right? We're going to be here next Friday, uh, kind of. And uh, this, at this point in our program, we put on the music and you get to dance your demons off. And like I said, we got a lot of demons to dance off in America today. Yeah. And while you're dancing, we're also going to give you a chance to win our trivia giveaway. We're going to put our trivia question in the chat. And the question that you've all been waiting for to now answer to win the bundle is 
since it was founded in 1977. How many artists have created new work in collaboration with the Fabric Workshop and Museum Studio? How many artists? How many? All right. So the closest answer will win tonight's special prize bundle of Fabric Workshop membership, L Jam swag, bubbles, and a book by Jonathan Linden Chase. What? Okay. So we're going to give you two, two minutes to dance or to chat your answer to the trivia question, or both if you're multitasking on this Friday and drinking, and or you just need to take a moment to just feel the vibes and watch us get down. Are y'all ready? Let's jam. Turn it up. It's a bop. My Spotify, right now. It's a bop. Ooh, that was like that was a bop and a chair workout for me. Yes. It is. You know, like <laughs> like chair dancing. That's like a new thing. Chair dancing during like your work week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I needed to shake a little something off me for this Friday. Nice moves, DJ. You know, little fan action. <laughs> little fan yes. action. Yeah. I know there were some nice moves out there in the Zoomiverse. I could mm -hmm. feel it. I could mm -hmm. feel the energy out there. Yes. And uh, you know, we're almost at the end of this program. It's almost that time to announce the giveaway answer and winner. But first, a word from our sponsor. Start it off, Juju. Yes. Do you want to make the boldest dreams of artists like Jonathan Linden chase a reality? When you join the Fabric Workshop and Museum, you are not only supporting artistic experimentation and creation, but also ensuring audiences can experience their work free of charge. So join today and enjoy member-only Fridays, private curator-led tours, and discounts in the shop and on events, plus so much more. Yes, yes, and so we've got some folks to thank tonight for tonight's event. Uh, first and foremost, shout out to Jonathan Linden Chase. Woo! Also want to thank Will Chase and the Company Gallery. Yes. Support for Jonathan Linden Chase Big Wash is provided by the National Endowment for the Arts, Danny Shakur, Liz and Jonathan Goldman, Maya Palmgarten, and John Parker and Company Gallery. Everyone at the Fabric Workshop and Museum played a part in making the Big Wash exhibition and this event a reality. But special thanks goes to the print project coordinator, Zach Ingram, director of studio operations, Nami Yamamoto, and the entire studio team. We'd also like to show our love for curator, Karen Patterson, exhibitions manager, Alec Unkovich, Director of Education, Christina Roberts, 
and the education team museum tour manager, Katy Perry, communications manager, Aaron Sweeney, the workshop gallery guide, Nikki Schaefer, and the visitor service and staff who bring the on-site experience to life. Also, we want to shout out Philadelphia Contemporary team, especially Carrie Bickford, Natalie Harris, and our Zoom DJ or ZJ, Nicole Pollard. Oh yeah, Nicole yes. Pollard. Where would we be without Nicole? Shout out to our poet caller, Jamal Jones, for getting us warm. Mm -hmm. And especially the LJAM production team and my co-host, my roadies, my Johns, associate producer, Jaleesa Munjin, AKA DJ Juju, and audio engineer, Vince Anthony, AKA DJ Black Child. So I just received word from our producers that we have a winner to the giveaway question. The question was, since it was founded in 1977, how many artists have created new work in collaboration with the Fabric Workshop and Museum Studio? The answer is 395. And the winner is Ray Vilkus with an answer hey. of 444. That was Amazing. really close, Ray. Congratulations, Ray. Congrats, Ray. Hey. Ray is like a prophet. All right. Our producers will be in touch with you, Ray, to get the prize into your hands by Pigeon Dove or Falcon or some other kind of <laughs> Pony Express that will get to your house. As long as it's not USPS, y'all. It's, it's, no it's not going to be that. <laughs> well, uh, you know, it's the end of our show, y'all. And that means that you, you have, have arrived. arrived. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Big Wash Radio is a wrap. Till next time, with sisterly affection. Peace. Peace.